My name is Baisat, I'm 20 years old, and I'm a Nigerian Irish, or Irish Nigerian, as you call it. Growing up in Ireland, secondary school was a big wake up call in terms of Islamophobia and um, racism and discrimination. When I started secondary school, I, you know, instantly started to be aware of like race. And I think that's when I kind of, I wouldn't say accepted my faith, but more kind of embraced the identity of, you know, like being Muslim, being black. There's definitely microaggressions from other students, you know, the sly comments and the, oh, it's the black people again, they're so loud. And, you know, and even from teachers, you know, like, um, gang and like you know like a group of black people no matter who they are is like automatically a gang and you're only suspicious of the black person just because you know they're black racism was definitely a huge kind of thing that i was i won't say shocked at but like you know i had to start getting used to i've always kind of said this thing where i feel like i'm too busy being black to be muslim for people to notice that hi i'm muslim too you know and I think in secondary school, was, that was definitely the case, you know. I didn't start off with a hijab. I started off with, you know, braids. Like, and I remember coming in and I had the hijab and, oh, you know, I miss seeing your hair or like, yeah, I prefer you with your braids and stuff like that. And it's just like, okay, but you know, I never asked, you know. And it, also the fact where like, you know, I was finally accepting my faith and it, you know, it, it, it kind of hurt for people to kind of say things like that. I remember being at work and just working away at the tills and a woman comes up and she doesn't really say anything to me. She's not really like, hi, how are you? You know, casual talk. I'm trying to explain to her like, you know, if she would like a refund or she would like to buy something. And she's kind of like, um, I don't understand your English. And I was kind of taken aback like, oh, like, okay. That's the first time I've gotten that, you know. Personally, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with the way I speak or, you know, my English, you know. She's continuously saying, oh, I can't understand your English. Do you have a manager? I could sense that she said it to hurt me. One of my coworkers comes up to me a few minutes later and she was like, did you hear what she said? So the lady had gone off to her and she's like, oh, how do you work with her? Like, she can't hear customers because she has a rag around her ears and stuff like that. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to start the waterworks again, you know. Everyone's like, oh, it's fine, like, you know, brush it off. And for me, it was a lot to kind of take in the fact that, you know, she had just said that comment about my English and then, you know, she had referred to my scarf and as a rag, which is, to me, was shocking, you know. We have white friends, we like white music, we eat white food, like, you know, we've integrated into being Irish, you know. But I feel like there's never fully a true acceptance, I think, there is to some extent, but the moment a black person has done something bad, it's the instant rejection. They've dropped the veil. There's no undercover anymore. Like they're just there, you know, blatantly being racist because that's an excuse because of a, um, a mistake is an excuse to be racist to someone. You know what I mean? I do understand like now that it's like from a place of like just not having enough education on it, really. I think Talking about racism is important. I think learning about black people, learning about the culture behind how we are, learning about us as people is really, really important into, you know, even with the braids and the wigs and like cultural appropriation and people not even understanding why we wear the wigs and we wear the braids. And if you don't understand something, if you don't understand why someone wears something or their lifestyle or how they act, to kind of just go into it and look it up yourself. and interact with Muslim people and interact with black people and kind of find out this information because although I love education and I, I love, I want to educate more people on this, I, I also don't feel like black people or Muslim people should carry the burden of having to explain every single thing to people instead of people actually going out and looking at it first and saying, okay, what's this and that? In terms of Islamophobia, I think there's just so much to learn about Islam in terms of accepting and tolerating Muslims. People do need to learn more about why women wear the hijab. And I think if they ever spoke to a Muslim woman, they would tell you that hijab is like liberating and 
you know, it's your own choice to wear what you want and no one else can control that but yourself is a very powerful and liberating feeling. But there's just not enough knowledge about it, you know. I think there could be a lot more support and there could be a lot more empathy. And I genuinely think it's down to education. That is one of the major reasons I want to, to become a teacher because I feel like kids can see both identities together working and know that you know they can still relate to me I'm still Irish you know I'm still someone who has similar interests with them I'm still like a human being that they can relate to and you know respect and kind of learn about as well and then grow up to kind of you know pass this on to other people or pass this on to their friends and when they're interacting with society to know that they've experienced both a Muslim person and a black person together I think would be helpful when they're like growing up. So yeah, I think that's really it.